Got some weather closing in on us. It's kicking up a pretty wicked tailwind though. Well, that looks nasty, man. That doesn't look spotty. That looks like permanent hard downpour. It's pretty damp out here. Oh, mother nature, won't you hear me calling? Won't you help me guide my way home? Mother nature, won't you hear me calling? Please help me, help me guide my way home. In the mountains all so far, looking to go there and jump in first. Paddle my canoe up down right there, down the river. I pull it from first. Oh, hey, mother nature, can't you hear me calling? Won't you help me? Help me guide my way home, Mother Nature, don't you hear me calling? I need you to guide my way home. Think about what you know this day. <laughs> Well, I just rounded a big bend in the river. I'm just looking at fire devastation right now on uh, the south bank of the Stewart River, and uh, I can see smoldering and smoke going still uh, in the hills. And the burn starts right there. Look, I can see smoke still coming from right there. Before I left, I heard the fire situation on the Stewart River was stable but I also heard the fire was up river from the mouth of the Hess. So <laughs> clearly that is not the case. And the fire is very much was right here and is still smoldering. I'll uh, camp on the other side of the river just to be safe. Okay, so I just pulled up here and wow, I can really smell the burn from here. I'm gonna jump out and have a look. Crazy. Look at this burn. Still smoldering. Burnt this tree right down. There's the other side of it. There's no small burn though. It goes way back up into the mountains behind it too. Now fires are natural. Actually the biodiversity of the northern boreal forest is largely fire induced, but due to climate change in recent years, there's been a lot of forest fires. When you're planning a trip in wilderness areas, nobody might really know uh, what's going on. There's nobody there to stop you and say, hey, wait, there's a forest fire. There's no park ranger. You know, there's no Ranger Joe saying, oh, you know, you better not go into that area. There's a forest fire. Maybe they don't even know. The bush plane pilot doesn't know. You get dropped off, you get caught in a forest fire. You gotta be able to do your research because this is use at your own risk. This is a, a very remote wilderness area. Forest fires rip through here. And, um, you know, you wanna be prepared. Burnt right out, fell over. Burnt to a crisp. Okay, well, better get back and jump in the canoe. Try not to get burnt to a crisp. <laughs> oh man, it's so late in the day, I should just pull over and stop. It's probably about 8.30 right now. But I'm gonna push on again. I don't mind paddling a little further, getting a little closer to my destination because I hear the last, I think, 50 kilometers is really slow current um, before Mayo. So I wouldn't mind getting a little further ahead now. I'm uh, right in the middle of a cloud of forest fire smoke right now. It's actually stinging my eyes. It's just pouring out of this smoldering forest right now onto the river. I've been paddling beside it for 
almost three kilometers, probably more than three kilometers now, actually. Well, it's 10.30 at night. I've paddled for 12 hours today. Oh, done about 50K. Uh, some forest fire smoke in the hills behind me. But I'm gonna camp here anyways. I'll know if the fire starts getting close if I get really, really hot. But it's just smoldering, so I think I'll be fine. But uh, yeah, I was gonna push on. Well, I did push on. I really wanted to get through this seemingly never-ending chain of huge S-bend after huge S-bend. Uh, but, uh, you know, I just looked at the map and realized I'm not even halfway through and it's just taking forever. So I decided to pull over and uh, call it for the day. I'm not even going to have a fire tonight. I'm just going to literally eat like a power bar and go right to bed so I can get up relatively early tomorrow. So this is home for the night. Smoke in the background. You know, there's something mildly unsettling about setting up camp when you're literally surrounded by smoldering forests. Experiencing some pretty substantial headwinds here. Um, this is going to uh, really put a dent in the time I make today. The wind was so bad there for a second, sort of blowing me back up river. It's hard even to keep the boat going straight. They're so strong at times. I've done about 8K today. So about 75k roughly to Mayo uh, with this headwind, not a chance in France I'm going to make it there anytime soon. I hope it doesn't stay up all day. Hopefully some of these bends will get me out of the wind. Cool. Well, I just saw a cinnamon color phased black bear. Looks like it was a cub and its sibling was black, it was right behind it. Pretty cool. Nice to see some wildlife for sure. Just making my way down the Stewart. I've done about 27 kilometers today, but uh, still a ways to go. No obstructions, just paddling, 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 paddling for hours on end. The only obstruction really in front of me today is distance. And if I look at it like that, I actually see it as more of a challenge and something to finish as an accomplishment. So that attitude's kind of helping me power through it for sure. coming around a big bend in the river and there's a huge bluff and there's 
got to be 200 of these little uh, nests burrowed into the side and all these birds flying around. I think they're some type of swallow, but look at this colony of these swallows here. And we have this actively eroding rock. You can hear the rocks falling down. That is really cool. They're all just coming in and out of the nest. Tons of them flying around here eating bugs, keeping the mosquitoes down, I'm sure. There's just nests everywhere. This is awesome. Very, very healthy ecosystem. All along this bluff on any part of hard pack dirt, there's dozens and dozens of nests. Well, that was really, really cool to see. <sighs> Doing a decent job at following uh, where I am on the map. I get mixed up once in a while, too far ahead or too far back and then figure it out. My GPS is just totally toast. It's totally pooched. So, GPS is great to have, but <laughs> I've been without it since the beginning of the trip, so. Fighting my way through, uh, a section of big, wide, expansive S-bends. They're a lot bigger and more substantial than at first glance. I use the compass actually to help figure out where I am on the map. I keep it just around my neck here. There's an easterly declination here, so that means that uh, you subtract 20 degrees um, from magnetic north to give you true north. What I'll do is I'll look on a river and I'll see what bend I'm on and I'll say, I think I'm here and I say well then I'll think well that bend is going south and I'll I'll take my compass out every you know once in a while and I'll say yep I'm heading south that's that's where I am that's the right way um, or if I see oh no I'm going west okay I can't be on this bend so uh, definitely helps just to pull out every once in a while and uh, help to figure out where the hell you are Stop for a uh, short beef jerky break. Hold on a sec. So I finally come out of those S bends. Um, sometimes the bends in the river were kind of blocking the wind. Right now they're just kind of blasting head on, but they kind of start and stop. But when they're bad, it's like literally I'm almost blowing back up river if I wasn't paddling I would actually blow back up river so that's making things more challenging um, anyways excited to uh, get this next set of rapids behind me and then definitely what's going to be a portage day around Fraser Falls anyways got to push on now and just paddle into this headwind at least we do have some current here so windy that this sand and dust is blowing up off of the gravel bars and it's blowing into my eyes and making my eyes water. Okay, approaching three mile rapid on the Stewart now. Uh, it looks and sounds a lot more significant. I'm gonna hop out and have a look on the left side and if it's uh, not runnable, I'm gonna portage on the right. Fingers crossed and I could run it because that would put a big dent into my schedule. But uh, you know, it's not about time out here, it's about uh, safety. So I'm gonna jump out, scout this one out and see what we're dealing with. All geared up for white water. All right. Should be about a class two. Five mile rapids coming up. See, most of the time I uh, just wear my dry suit with the arms tied up around my waist. 
when I have you know flat water sections and not white water. And that way it's quick and at the ready to put on all the way when I get to a rapid. And uh, I can also use it as a waiter so my tootsies don't get all cold and wet. Five mile rapids on the Stewart River, here we go. Some irregular waves in there though. Approaching Fraser Falls. Portage is on the left. Better keep my eyes peeled. I'd say this definitely looks like a falls. Aha, uh -huh, there's the trail. Well, I see the Portage Trail in quite an obvious spot. So Fraser Falls, here we are. Time for a long portage. Uh, I'm not looking forward to doing it, but looking forward to getting it done. Hey bear! Saw some bear prints, fresh ones of a cub at the beginning of this trail, so let my presence be known. Hey bear! Hey bear! I wonder what year a Jeep that is. Doesn't look extremely old, be interesting to know. Looks like uh, someone cut this bark to make a moose call here. Can see the tree still doing well as long as they don't take the cambium layer the bark will grow back a lot of portage trails have been around for thousands of years and uh, every trail has an interesting story to tell. Oh, got sunny out now we have a little sun shower uh, that is my last obstruction on the trip 
Now it's just kind of like pretty slow current and a long slog to Mayo. Well, back for the rest of the stuff. So Portage wasn't too bad. Uh, the trail uh, is really good. Obviously it's still used mostly probably by people from Mayo. Uh, probably as a snowmobile trail as well when uh, the river freezes up so they can get around the falls. Campsite, decent place to camp at the bottom of the trail here. And uh, some interesting historical detrius along the trail as well. Um, we have, looks like an old sink. An old wood stove, just rusted out. Funny how at one time this was just garbage. That is a very old wood stove. Kind of cool, I'm sure it has some historical significance to it. Um, anyways, uh, so kind of neat things to see on the way, maybe tied to the gold rush. That's a barrel stove. Maybe a platform for a tent. Looks like something that's pretty new. Raspberries. Uh, this is probably why I saw fresh bear prints on the trail. And uh, this actually looks like it was trampled down by a bear. Mmm, ton of them around here. Ah, delicious. Oh, look at this. I don't even see this. Cabin. Old storage shed. It looks like it's been redone a few times, but it's got gold rush days written all over it. Storage shed, basically. See what I mean about the bears liking the berries and the raspberries? That is a gigantic grizzly bear poop. That's full of seeds. Who saw this little trail going in off the Portage Trail? It looks like burial ground. Some people were laid to rest here. No markers, but it's marked off as a, a cemetery. I wonder who was buried there probably a long time ago. There is uh, native peoples. Neat thing to go and uh, pay your respects at. Not something I was expecting to see along this portage trail. <laughs> There's a book called Every Trail Has a Story. And that's just so true. And uh, it'd be fascinating to link all these artifacts and things together and learn what the story of this trail is. Well, I don't like portaging as much as the next guy, but uh, after not portaging for 350 kilometers, it's kind of a welcome break. Anyways, looks like I'm gonna have to uh, paddle late into the evening again. See the river a couple hundred meters to go maybe. This portage is about 1200 meters long I'd say.
One more trip. Third and final load. Just to give you an example, if you have three trips, for every trip you have to walk back and get the second load. So if this portage trail is 1.2 kilometers, you have to count all the times I've walked back to get a load too. So I've walked six kilometers as of now. Finally done this portage and the last obstruction for my trip here. Next thing, Mayo. I don't think I'm gonna make it there today, but I'm gonna push on for a bit. So I've just paddled my 40k today, challenging with the portage and the headwinds. Um, I'm 45k from Mayo, and at 1 p.m. tomorrow, there's a vehicle shuttle that Up North Adventures runs, which I can hop on, and it'll give me a ride back to Whitehorse, and then I'll rearrange my flights to fly back home because I'm about, I think, three or four days ahead of schedule right now. Uh, but it's expensive to change flights and if I miss that shuttle on top of the flight change plans I'm also going to have to get a flight from Mayo to Whitehorse with all my baggage so basically what I'm thinking is the best thing for me to do right now is just to beast paddle 45k through the night back to Mayo and make it there in time for the one o'clock shuttle tomorrow afternoon. That will probably save me a thousand bucks. So what would you do? Um, I guess I could just camp out here for an extra four days, uh, but uh, I miss my family and I'm pretty much done the trip without having to push it super hard or anything. So I don't need more time and um, I wanna see my wife and I wanna see my little boy. Uh, so yeah, I guess I could just stay here but, you know, I think the best option is for me to just paddle through the night and arrive in Mayo around 3 in the morning. And uh, that's what I'm going to try to do right now. It's going to be a long, long, never-ending slog, and I'm not looking forward to it, unfortunately. But it is what it is. A little more consultation of the map. Looks like it's actually 55 kilometers to Mayo, which sucks. I'm tired. Oh, oh well, that's how she goes. So 
some wolves howling. Let's see if I can call them over here. a couple in the distance answering back but I was hoping to get the pack that's right off here that's the main group howling wondering what the hell I am and coming over here <clears throat> I don't know if my wolf call was up to par though actually done that on its work before and a wolf came right up to me so maybe not today though all right time to keep battling like a fiend Just a porcupine out for an evening stroll. Oh, dum dum de dum 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 de dee dee, hurt it up de dum. It's running full speed, just kidding. I like porcupines. They're just so chill, they're just so relaxed, you know? Don't really need to run, they're just always just. Just even keel for the most part. Well, I'm hoping this is about as dark as it's gonna get. Uh, it's also cold and it's raining. So I'm hoping this hasn't been a foolish decision, me deciding to paddle through the night to make it back to Mayo. I'm worried that maybe I'm gonna freeze my ass off and uh, get soaked. And uh, you know, I'm not too, I guess I'm not too worried about obstructions like sweepers in the river because there's really not much current. So I think I'll be okay, but it's just a little ominous paddling into near darkness while it's raining. Um, I'm usually always sleeping by now, so I don't really know how much darker it gets. My guess is that it just doesn't really get that much darker. It's just going to stay like this for a long time, so hopefully my eyes adjust. So yeah, that's my just check-in with you on my uh, all-night paddle back to Mayo. 
if I make it there tonight, I will have paddled over a hundred kilometers in one shot. So that's pretty impressive for me, I guess. Anyways, it's gonna keep paddling and uh, I'll check in with you in a bit. Okay, can't see because it is pitch black. I don't know what time it is because I can't see my watch where it is. It's in my map case, but uh, it's probably about 1, 1 1.30. And I keep saying I hope this is as dark as it's going to get, but I think it is. Um, hardly any current and still pushing on on this night paddle. The thing is, it doesn't stay dark for too long and the sun starts coming up, so. It did get darker. I thought it wasn't supposed to get dark here. <laughs> but you know what? It's uh, almost August 1st. And those light days of the year around the summer solstice in the uh, beginning of July and leading up to it. So it is almost pitch black, but it's not pitch black. I'm really hoping it doesn't get much darker than this because to be honest with you I'm already having problems seeing which way the rivers goes I'm making decent time I think I have about 30k to go so paddling at night time not sure it's the wisest idea don't do this at home boys and girls not sure how we're gonna show this scene without more b-roll, but whatever. Definitely starting to get light out. I'm paddling all night. Uh, it's been a bit of an adventure. And it's just been very, very long. So it is starting to get light out now. It's uh, about 10 after four in the morning, long, long chilly paddle through the night uh, a couple interesting little adventures one time I got hung up on a sandbar I couldn't see anything I had to push off and paddle back up river and take a channel in between two islands um, which was very challenging because I had to paddle quite hard at that point and uh, yeah just seemingly never-ending but right now I think I see the float plane base. Let's have a look. Is that a float plane? Oh my God, it is. I have completed the marathon. This trip surprise me around every corner finishing in the wee hours of the morning and uh, it has been unbelievable adventure and yeah. excitement around every single corner from the very beginning until the very end even the times when there were long slogs of river paddling with not too many obstructions to deal with. I'd see, uh, you know, a, a fizzling out forest fire. I'd see a family of grizzly bears. A raging rapid would appear that's not even marked on the map. And just from the beginning, uh, doing this trip with no notes, just Government of Canada topographic maps and running Keel Creek and having to bushwhack portage endlessly to get to the Hess and then just those sets of rapids one after the other and the mountain scenery it's just been absolutely incredible and uh, to finish it ahead of schedule like this to me feels like a pretty big accomplishment and uh, you know this is definitely experience I'll remember for the rest of my life it's always a little bittersweet when you finish a trip because you're like yeah I did it but then at the same time you're like oh man it's over I'm happy that I finished it but I'm also sad that it's over